Hello. Don't you find it kind of odd that the only people that are speaking up are women? And I don't have a problem with that because I know I'm a man and uh, I don't have no that kind of insecurity. But I'm wondering on the world stage, other than Ibrahim Travore and the, the guy from uh, Niger and Mali and uh, Dr. Uh, Palumbo or Lumbo or whatever his name is. Uh, I can't pronounce some of the African names because I've been gone from the, the country for, for four or five hundred years and so we don't, you, we don't know and can't enunciate like we're supposed to. But I'm just going to tell you right now, where are the men speaking up? I mean, do we have black men present? And if you are, and you're talking about Trump, you know, I, I guess you might as well stay hidden because this man here can't even hold his uh, bowels and can't even walk up the steps of an airplane, can't keep a thought. But you want to vote for him instead of voting for the black woman, you know, that, yes, you probably write about everything you say, but that's not the point. The point is unity. And I, I, I'm not going to talk to you no more about that. I'm going to let a woman talk to you and tell you why you are in the position that you are in America and in Africa and what we need to do about that. Because when brothers can't get along, if we got to get in the ring and fight it out, one thing I know is he may not look like me, but I know our colors don't differ. And that tells me all I need to know about where I'm from. But there's more evidence to that, okay? Stop listening to these people that don't have no degrees, haven't even been over to Africa to do any digging or, or, or anthropology, you know, any chemists or any kind of historians. You need some people that are recognized, not some person that could just jump on the internet and talk about they this and they that. I'm, I, it's kind of funny. My grandmother, my dad, all could have collected on being an Indian, but you know, they never even went that route. They always thought that they were black, you know, because they knew that in their heart. It doesn't matter where you've been for 400 years, okay? Because where did those people come from that's here, that you said been here all the while? Where did they come from? Where did they start from? I tell you what, sometimes you won't listen to me. In 1945, 13 Jewish men met in the library. They didn't even have a place to meet. This was soon after Holocaust. The ideas they came up with during that meeting were based on two facts, two realizations that there was a need for them to unite for them to speak with one voice when it comes to issues pertaining to them and their country. They also realized that their unity was useless if they did not back it up with financial resources. So that is all they did. They united. They said, we may not like each other as individuals, but when it comes to their Jewishness, when it comes to Israel, they stick together like superglue. They also pulled out their financial resources. If I may stand, stop for a second, use Israel as an example and the Jewish people. The Jewish people own this little, bitty, tiny little piece of land, which is a desert. There's only 15 million Jews around the world. Compared to Africa, we have the largest land mass on Earth, richest continent on Earth, and over 400 million African diaspora. The Jews, their little bitty country that is a desert, financially they control the world whether you like it or not. When those Americans in Charlottesville were holding their tiki torches, talking about the Jews will not replace us. You never saw a single Jewish man on television complaining. They complain with their finances. Their dollars speak for them. Jews do not go and borrow money 
from anybody. They fund themselves. They're probably the most powerful people financially. Their money speaks for them. What do we do instead when George Floyd gets killed and many others? We're on the street, we make noise and that's it. If everybody that protested could put a dollar and say, yes, we want to protest, but we're also going to do something about it. Now we could get somewhere. We could get somewhere. Translate those voices into finances. Let's make that bridge. Let's create that bridge. Let's take a page from the Jews. Let's understand that as black people, we are the most endangered species on earth. Let's also make a commitment that how long are we going to allow this carnage to go on? How long are we going to continue to be stupid? It's about the finances, my brothers and sisters. If we do not bring our finances together, if we do not understand that my $85 a month for a year is an investment in not only myself, but my children, my grandchildren, and generations to come, then who are we? what is the solution? Understand that the brain drain out of Africa started over 400 years ago with the children of Africa who were being taken out of Africa as slaves. Remember when they were choosing which Africans to take out as slaves, they chose the fittest, the smartest that who they felt would sustain and survive the rigorous journey across the Atlantic. Followed by those who have left Africa in recent years in search of greener pastures, some running away from famine and wars. But the end result is Africans around the world are building other nations while we are allowing our beloved continent to languish or be exploited. The colonizers have been in Africa for centuries. All they have succeeded at doing is building infrastructure designed to do nothing but extract resources out of Africa. That's all they have done, and that's all they plan to continue to do. We're the only ones who can change that paradigm. And that means the African diaspora must wake up. That means the African diaspora must understand what is really going on and not understand Africa from the eyes of the colonizers, from the eyes of the media, that have chosen to paint Africa as a diseased and dying continent in need of rescue. Let's understand our Africa as African diaspora. Let's understand our role. It's very difficult for African, um, African businessmen in Malawi, in Botswana, to think continental. They're struggling to make a living in that little bitty country with all the restrictions and the difficulties of reaching to the next to the country next door to then ask that same businessman to think continental. But the people who can help with that bridge, the pe people who are already integrated in a way, people who can come to Africa with an integrated mind are the children of Africa in the diaspora. And there you have it. And we are the diaspora. But let me say something, because we don't talk about this. A lot of people are right when they say that Africans were already here. But we under, if, if you understand that, you have to understand that Africans have been coming here for thousands of years before the, the slave trade, okay? And that they populated this whole earth, okay? And so, Understand, it doesn't matter if your kin folks, you know, came over, you know, under bondage or free, because they have Egyptian, Olmec, and all kind of other African nations that they can tar or pull up the remains of all over this world. But right now, we have to look at this and have to understand that your roots lie in Africa. But you know what? When you were a slave, you were running away so that you could have freedom. Now you have some sort of semblance of freedom and you're running to the very thing that you were running away from when you were in slavery.